Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the ninth and final for this year Prague Process webinar. My name is Alexander Malev. I am project manager at the Prague Process Secretariat at the International Center for Migration Policy Development uh, in Vienna, also known as ICMPD. ICMPD has three main pillars of work, namely research, capacity building, and migration dialogues. The Prague process is one of several intergovernmental dialogues managed by ICMPD. It is currently funded by the European Commission's DG Home under the Mobility Partnership Facility. Let me start with a few technical remarks. Please choose your preferred language uh, in the interpretation button. You can choose between English and Russian. And we would also recommend to mute the original audio, especially if you're listening to us in Russian. Secondly, this uh, webinar is going to be recorded and uploaded to our website, where you can also find the previous eight webinars uh, issued this year. We would also like to inform you that you can ask questions uh, through the chat function, and these will be addressed following Ms. Krasteva's presentation. Uh, which shall be at around 11.20, and we have time until 12 today. I'm very happy to welcome so many of you. As you probably know, this webinar series was launched by our former leading state, Lithuania, in April 2020 as part of the contingency plan in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Due to the positive feedback received on behalf of our participating states, we plan to continue with this webinar series, even once COVID-19 has perhaps a less tangible impact on our work, which shall hopefully be the case throughout the coming year. Today's webinar uh, is an ambitious one as it aims to uh, link the different mega trends in terms of migration, witnessed in the Western Balkan region over the past decades, starting from the Balkan Wars in the 90s to the current situation and the recently issued Pact on Migration and Asylum will also be touched upon towards the end. This ambitious goal can probably be best achieved by Ms. Anna Krasteva, Professor of Political Science at the Center for European Refugees, Migration and Ethnic Studies at the New Bulgarian University in Sofia. Anna is Dr. Honoris Causa of University of Lille in France. She's president of the Policy and Citizens Observatory, Migration, Digitalization, Climate. Anna has authored uh, some 30 books and published numerous articles in about 20 countries. Her main fields of research and teaching are migration policies and politics, far-right populism, civic mobilizations, and citizenship. Anna Krasteva teaches at the MA level on forced migration and media at the University of Athens and uh, on democracy, uh, democracy and human rights at the University of Sarajevo and the University of Bologna. She's a member of the Global Campus on Human Rights and has been guest professor uh, at many European universities. She's editor-in-chief of the journal Southeastern Europe and a uh, member of the editorial boards of nationalism and ethnic politics. And she's also president of the board of ESFAM, as well as of Maison des Sciences de l'Homme Indigent, member of the board of the Diplomatic Institute and of numerous international scientific boards. In this sense, uh, we are very happy and grateful to have her here to talk on this complex topic and uh, issue over the past decades. And uh, we are also happy to have our first webinar explicitly dedicated to the Western Balkan region. So with this being said, I leave the floor to Anna and wish you a fruitful and informative talk. Thank you very much.
Mission Impossible uh, to summarize uh, Balkan uh, migration uh, policies and uh, trends uh, uh, in uh, 40 minutes, uh, uh, but uh, we'll do uh, so <clears throat> by asking uh, the following questions. Why, when, who, and how? Why will introduce the geopolitical uh, perspective? Um, Balkans uh, at certain moments attract uh, European and global attention becoming uh, for this uh, time a kind of migration uh, champion. When uh, will introduce uh, the time dimension? Uh, we'll see that uh, through different uh, time lenses, the migration profile changes and uh, uh, it is always a challenge to migration policies uh, first uh, to be able to see those different profiles, but also to be able to manage them uh, uh, in uh, the present. Who migrants as actors? Uh, it is uh, much more a wish than a reality because in such a short presentation, of course, I will focus mainly on, uh, on big trends and much less on uh, actors, but uh, uh, let's say uh, my both theoretical and civic perspective uh, is to understand uh, uh, the migrants as uh, authors and uh, uh, as uh, um, uh, uh, people with the stronger uh, projects with the capacity to realize so sometimes, of course, uh, very often even to fail with those uh, uh, projects. So that uh, there are real uh, human beings and real actors behind the, the, the trends and we have to take uh, into account and of course uh, uh, how uh, let's say uh, migration policy uh, do, uh, uh, do manage uh, uh, migration uh, uh, flows. Why <laughs> among the variety of reasons uh, I, I have taken uh, three, uh, uh, three of them. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, theoretical. Um, uh, you know, this uh, famous uh, uh, diagnosis uh, uh, um, uh, laboratory for the study of migration, uh, Russell King uh, for Albania, but we could uh, generalize uh, for the whole region. So the, reg uh, the region uh, is extremely attractive uh, to scholars uh, because there are so many uh, often contradicting uh, uh, phenomena, uh, the uh, flows, uh, 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 tendencies uh, crossing uh, that uh, it is uh, really a great uh, challenge and also uh, intellectual pleasure to deal uh, uh, with them. Uh, uh, the second uh, uh, is that most of those phenomena uh, have uh, uh, a bigger impact. Uh, um, all the refugee crises, uh, and we'll analyze them in a second, uh, uh, are part uh, of a larger, uh, uh, very dramatic, I would say, uh, phenomenon, very challenging uh, for policies. And uh, uh, the last perspective is uh, uh, the uh, perspective of Europeanization. Uh, the uh, different uh, Western Balkan countries are uh, at different levels to their European integration. Some are members, others are candidate uh, countries, uh, 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 third group up potential candidate uh, uh, countries, but for all of them, uh, the European perspective is uh, uh, very important and uh, we'll see the implications of uh, uh, this European perspective. Also of what uh, Alexander Malé mentioned, uh, uh, the new pact on uh, uh, migration and asylum. Uh, the temporality uh, scheme, there would be a little bit of theory. I am perfectly aware that uh, the audience is uh, very mixed and uh, that uh, there are high level uh, officials, uh, um, representatives of institutions of different uh, stakeholders, so that uh, there would not be a lot of theory, uh, but uh, a little bit uh, just uh, uh, because theory allows us uh, 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 really for more subtle analysis then uh, simply, uh, 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 let's say, a more descriptive uh, uh, comparative, uh, even if it is comparative uh, uh, perspective on policies. I take uh, a very famous uh, uh, typology of uh, uh, Fernand Brodel. Fernand Brodel uh, is one of the most famous uh, historian, uh, French, but with a global uh, intellectual uh, influence. Uh, and he structures the historic time in three different categories. 
so three different types of history, structural, conjunctural, and history of events. That's why we use also the concept of temporality because uh, 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 historic, political, social time, uh, they are different from the chronological time. And so these uh, uh, three types of history introduce different temporalities or really long uh, durée, uh, um, uh, the mid uh, term and uh, the last category, uh, uh, ad hoc events, uh, unique, very often contingent events. Please remember this category. It <laughs> would be very, very important to understand uh, 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 what is going on uh, recently in the, uh, uh, in the Balkans. Looking through these temporal lenses, we see very different profiles of the region. The first one uh, introduces, let's say, the big, uh, long durée trend which is uh, emigration, that the region has been, remains, and will be for some period, uh, not short period, but uh, will be for some more long uh, years, region of emigration. The second perspective, the midterm, uh, the political conjuncture, focuses, makes a zoom on the different uh, refugee migration uh, crisis, and we'll compare three, uh, uh, three of them. And uh, the, the third category, this event ad hoc uh, um, things, which uh, happen very often, uh, uh, surprisingly, uh, are, are, are outbreaks. And uh, the three lenses, uh, again, refer to different types of migration, uh, labor migration, mainly in the first one, refugees, asylum seekers uh, uh, in the second perspective, and the irregular migration uh, in the third, uh, uh, in the third the history uh, of events. I'll try to uh, deal with migration uh, uh, in four perspectives. So the first one, uh, how migration unfolds, how migration uh, phenomenon uh, uh, happens, and uh, to delineate the major trends uh, uh, and uh, uh, the biggest flaws. The second, uh, how migration uh, is theorized. Just a little bit again, it will not be <laughs> too theoretical, uh, but uh, 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 to explain, let's say, the need of concepts uh, so that there are two major arguments. Uh, first, how we uh, name a migration uh, is absolutely crucial because we apply different uh, uh, policies to different types of uh, uh, migration. Second, uh, because there are some innovative concepts uh, uh, and uh, it would be interesting to see uh, if they are applicable to Western Balkans or not, uh, when they are forged, uh, uh, not uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the region. Uh, the political uh, uh, angle uh, would have, uh, uh, let's say, two uh, uh, perspectives or a double uh, political perspective, policies and politics. Policies uh, define priorities, politics define frame. And uh, uh, policies uh, are very important because priorities, uh, uh, um, to define priorities, to choose priorities, to translate them into institutions, to institutionalize them into laws, into legislation, into programs, it is a, a very tough uh, political decision. And uh, we'll see uh, that uh, um, defining the right priorities is not an easy exercise. Uh, so that uh, sometimes uh, and very often uh, even major trends uh, uh, and phenomena have not been appropriately managed why at the same time, of course, there were uh, different uh, uh, migration policies uh, applied. So the frames, uh, the politicization uh, of migration uh, is also a very important phenomenon for a variety of reasons. Um, again, I'll take uh, one or two, uh, just because uh, uh, the more migration is politicized, uh, uh, the more the political discourse, and it is uh, very often uh, not uh, moderate, but quite extremist, influences also impacts on uh, policies uh, uh, them, uh, themselves and also because 
uh, framing uh, uh, the migration uh, by uh, political uh, actors uh, has a huge impact on the public opinion and uh, um, we'll examine uh, um, uh, in a few minutes uh, how uh, crucial this impact uh, could be. And art, art of course is a magic uh, and so does a lot of things, uh, uh, but uh, uh, let's say concerning uh, um, uh, migration, there is uh, one uh, uh, impact which is uh, absolutely crucial, uh, especially in situations of a highly politicized migration and uh, refugee uh, crisis, it is extremely difficult, let's say, to speak of solidarity. And uh, uh, in such situations especially, uh, sometimes uh, the only legitimate uh, uh, language of uh, um, solidarity, of uh, uh, integration, uh, is uh, the one of art. When I speak of art, I do not uh, think, uh, and I do not use, uh, you have already seen and you will see, uh, uh, high art, uh, but much more street art, participatory art, like uh, uh, in this very nice uh, painting of an Afghan uh, a teenager. Uh, he painted the role from Afghanistan to Serbia. He did uh, that uh, in a refugee camp uh, in Serbia. Uh, how the presentation uh, will be structured, uh, uh, three big uh, parts. Uh, uh, so the first one will compare, so very briefly uh, articulate uh, three crises and then uh, compare uh, uh, them. And uh, even if three crises are already a lot, uh, I will add a fourth uh, crisis. Uh, um, so, and uh, we'll uh, examine them uh, in a, a comparative way. Uh, the second uh, uh, part uh, will uh, deal uh, with the, the biggest policy innovation uh, uh, in the Western Balkan uh, countries uh, concerning uh, migration policy uh, the last uh, a decade. And uh, at the third uh, part, uh, I'll try to summarize uh, to, to uh, formulate some conclusions again, uh, mapping uh, uh, the, the, the region concerning uh, policies, uh, uh, but also uh, um, trying to apply the messages of uh, uh, the new pact on migration and mobility uh, to, uh, to the region. <clears throat> We start uh, with uh, the crisis. I'm really happy that uh, we start by more dramatic uh, uh, and um, uh, uh, phenomenon expressions of migration to go, let's say, to more positive uh, uh, ones. Of course, uh, uh, let's take into account that at any moment, even uh, during the periods where we speak uh, on the migration uh, and the refugee crisis, all the other forms of migration, labor migration, uh, they do unfold uh, equally. Simply, uh, the political attention is uh, really focused uh, on the crisis, and uh, it uh, should be the, uh, the, uh, the case. <laughs> so the first uh, one we do remember beginning of uh, 90s uh, where the Western Balkans became um, the Europe's migration champ champion, uh, producing uh, the biggest uh, uh, migration flows after Second World uh, War, uh, um, an emblematic uh, example of uh, uh, this uh, uh, difficult uh, period is uh, Bosnia, where half of the pre a world population uh, has been forcefully displaced and half of that half uh, um, had to leave, uh, had and wanted uh, to leave this uh, conflict war uh, region uh, as, uh, uh, as refugees. And uh, so that uh, several uh, migration records uh, have been achieved. Uh, I mentioned the, the one of uh, Serbia, but uh, the debate uh, of course could uh, add uh, much, more, uh, uh, much more details. Um, there are two maps, uh, uh, my students uh, like uh, comparing uh, uh, them. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, one uh, uh, represents uh, the kaleidoscopic uh, uh, picture of the ethnic composition of Bosnia-Herzegovina before the war. 
and uh, uh, next one uh, we see only a few uh, years uh, later quite diverse uh, uh, picture uh, uh, much um, uh, uh, more uh, clear colors uh, uh, so that uh, um, uh, really very uh, very deep uh, change uh, in the ethnic composition uh, it explains a lot uh, about the war uh, about uh, first uh, let's say the drivers and second uh, the outcomes uh, the good news of course uh, is uh, that this is a map after uh, after the crisis and uh, currently uh, uh, the situation is again a little bit uh, more uh, uh, more mixed the second uh, the second uh, refugee uh, crisis uh, uh, is uh, the one of a few years ago the global migration uh, the global refugee Syrian uh, crisis, uh, uh, which uh, um, touched uh, the Balkans uh, very, uh, very uh, heavily. Um, uh, you see uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the photos, uh, hope on the mouth of, uh, uh, of the migrants, uh, help, <laughs> don't forget the refugees, help the refugees. Uh, uh, so those are very strong uh, slogans. Uh, which uh, uh, express uh, um, the, the, the despair of uh, so many uh, uh, people and so many arrived uh, in the Balkan. Uh, uh, th these were again um, uh, very impressive uh, uh, trends uh, concerning uh, uh, both uh, uh, the, the number, the size, uh, but also the intensity. Um, country relatively small one, normal, let's say, average size for the Western Balkans, but uh, small in European uh, uh, standards, uh, like Northern Macedonia receiving uh, 400 persons per day uh, was uh, a big, uh, uh, a big uh, uh, um, challenge uh, for, my, for migration policy. Uh, you saw on the map, I, uh, yeah, I passed uh, very rapidly, uh, that uh, uh, the so-called Western Balkan route uh, of course, uh, it crossed the Balkans, but did not touch equally all the countries. So that uh, some countries have been um, uh, have been uh, really involved in management of these flows, and some uh, uh, some less. So how to conceptualize? Uh, again, uh, we are speaking here uh, from one side of theoretical concepts, but from another side of uh, uh, of uh, policies. Uh, and the policies are uh, very, uh, uh, very, uh, very different. And uh, two um, conflicting, I would say, or different or opposing uh, narratives uh, uh, clashes. So uh, one uh, uh, is uh, um, the key term uh, of uh, uh, the first narrative is a state of emergency. A state of emergency, which uh, uh, was uh, established for this big flow, which uh, uh, was uh, um, conceived as flow, a flow of irregular uh, migrants. When we speak of irregular migration, uh, we, I don't know, scholars, but especially politicians, uh, uh, so uh, they, uh, uh, they create uh, the cluster of irregular migration from uh, one side, uh, uh, smuggling. Uh, and uh, uh, trafficking networks from, from another side. Uh, and so the rapprochement of these, uh, uh, let's say, two phenomena creates this extremely ambiguous uh, concept of uh, uh, crime migration, uh, 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 which uh, the, the concept itself, it uh, uh, directly uh, refers to security uh, policy, which should be the case, uh, of course, with all uh, smuggling and uh, uh, trafficking uh, networks. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, a few other elements of uh, this, uh, uh, of this uh, narrative, uh, so it stresses on uh, no liberty of movement, so the migrants are supposed to follow uh, the Balkan uh, uh, route, uh, uh, and uh, uh, of course very high uh, surveillance. The other narrative, the other narrative uh, uh, is uh, the one um, uh, conceptualizing uh, uh, the Western Balkan route as a humanitarian uh, corridor. Uh, so the target is defined differently. Uh, so the target uh, uh, is not any more irregular migrants, uh, despite the fact, uh, okay, so, uh, uh, okay, the flows are the same, uh, but the, the terms uh, are different, uh, but as asylum seekers and uh, refugees. Uh, we do know that very few of them asked for asylum in the region, so that uh, uh, it was really a transit region. 
uh, but uh, a transit which uh, uh, really um, was more safe uh, in the uh, sense that uh, they crossed uh, uh, thousands of uh, kilometers without the smugglers. Uh, uh, it is a big advantage for them. And uh, of course, uh, they gain time to uh, re uh, reach uh, their desired uh, final uh, destination uh, much uh, uh, much uh, much faster and much uh, uh, safer. So a very interesting book, very provocative with uh, this uh, uh, really very strong uh, title, The Disaster of uh, European Refugee Policy. Uh, the whole book is uh, um, a result of uh, a research of Slovenian uh, scholars, uh, very, very critical so that they do analyze uh, the true narratives uh, I, uh, I, mentioned, uh, uh, I mentioned here. Mm -hmm. So we come to today and uh, uh, we see a very uh, diverse uh, picture. Uh, let's uh, try first to enter <laughs> into this uh, diversity uh, through um, the very beautiful photos uh, of a, a photographer amateur, uh, a Bosnian teacher uh, who started seeing uh, uh, refugees, asylum seekers uh, in the street in front of her house and uh, she decided uh, to start uh, to making pictures uh, uh, and uh, she produced a nice uh, series uh, uh, published in uh, Instagram uh, called uh, uh, Migration, Migration Times. Uh, it is um, yeah, uh, quite uh, yeah, nice uh, to, to look at the, at the whole uh, series. What uh, we observe is different <laughs> from uh, uh, what uh, uh, this uh, wonderful Bosnian uh, teacher uh, saw, saw, so that we see a much more diverse uh, uh, picture. But let's start, of course, uh, uh, with the, uh, Bosnia, Bosnia and Herzegovina. We do remember it was the core of uh, uh, displacement and the refugee uh, force displaced and the refugee flows during the first migration uh, uh, crisis. And currently, uh, there is uh, uh, an increase uh, in uh, uh, numbers. Here, it is the moment to say, but it does not concern only Bosnia and on, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and only the figures in this uh, uh, slide, but also uh, on on the others. Uh, there are so many different statistics uh, coming from different sources. So please uh, take uh, all the uh, all the figures, uh, let's say, as trends, and not uh, uh, simply because do not produce figures, we, uh, we have to deal with uh, those uh, which exist uh, 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 already. <clears throat> so uh, uh, really uh, very impressive uh, increase uh, in recent uh, refugee flows uh, in, uh, um, in Bosnia. I do visit uh, Sarajevo regularly uh, and I saw them and I also made uh, uh, some photographs not as beautiful as this one uh, of uh, people in the streets in the, the square near Pasha uh, etc. We change a country, we go to Kosovo uh, and we see a completely different uh, uh, picture. Uh, so um, a few uh, uh, years ago, so more or less uh, the, 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 the period of the uh, previous way, a big number of irregular Kosovar headed uh, to uh, Western Europe, uh, mainly uh, to uh, uh, Germany. Um, a very, very, very similar phenomenon we observed uh, in Albania. So here, uh, why, let's say, those uh, outbreaks? Uh, okay, we could uh, detail uh, in, uh, uh, in the discussions so of fake and uh, misinformation and uh, <coughs> play a big role uh, of, uh, of really the, <coughs> the creation of those uh, uh, huge uh, for small countries uh, uh, and uh, uh, really um, uh, surprisingly uh, emerging uh, uh, migration flows, very difficult, uh, uh, very difficult to manage and how simply informing the public is not enough, uh, but uh, uh, also uh, very tough uh, policies of return uh, 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 are needed. Uh, again, we change uh, 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 countries, so we go to, to Montenegro. Uh, it was uh, not part of, uh, uh, of the map. You saw Mon Montenegro was uh, not uh, included as a major uh, transit country uh, during the Balkan uh, refugee uh, route. Uh, but uh, the, the last years, again, we again, not again, but uh, let's say similar, 
to other uh, Balkan countries, uh, uh, we observe increasing of uh, migration uh, uh, roads, uh, 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 flows, uh, some of them coming from uh, not typical destinations uh, as Moroccans, um, uh, but uh, it is also an expression of the shift uh, of, uh, uh, of the road itself. Uh, which is not any more Western Balkans, uh, but coastal or Adriatic uh, uh, routes. Uh, we go to North uh, Macedonia, and again, uh, uh, we uh, see the last uh, years uh, increase uh, in migration uh, in migration flows, and uh, uh, with a composition uh, similar to the one uh, in, uh, uh, in Bosnia, a lot of uh, uh, Pakistani, Afghan, uh, uh, Iranians, etc. <laughs> Three crises, we'll compare them on the uh, next uh, slide, uh, but as if they are not enough, uh, I introduce a new, a new type. Uh, so why to invent crisis in a period of uh, so many crises? So uh, I, it is um, really a more uh, theoretical uh, uh, let's say explanation. I uh, would be very, uh, very, uh, very brief. I summarize it in this provocative, a statement, if the refugee crisis did not exist, it should have been invented uh, by uh, populist leaders. Uh, so uh, we have to make a clear distinction between two types of crisis. Uh, there is a so-called classic or normal or regular crisis, uh, uh, which is characterized uh, uh, concerning the Western Balkans and concerning uh, whatever region uh, in te we take in the world uh, by, uh, let's say, two major features. So, so first, uh, uh, big uh, for, the, uh, 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 for the European countries, the biggest after Second World War uh, um, uh, migration uh, increase uh, in refugee flows. Uh, and the second, the second, because we speak of uh, a, a, a crisis uh, from a policy perspective, the incapacity of institutions, both of uh, uh, national and European level, uh, uh, for efficient management uh, uh, of, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 of uh, uh, these unprecedented uh, uh, flaws. So the second, so this is a, a real um, classic uh, by definition, uh, not by expression, but by definition uh, uh, crisis. So I'm with this provocative, uh, uh, let's say definition, uh, I uh, define another, uh, another type, uh, uh, which is, uh, uh, um, I call it more theoretically post-democratic crisis, but I will not uh, uh, introduce, uh, uh, um, okay, this one, let's call it new crisis, uh, 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 which is in a situation of decreased migration or refugee flows, but the increase of anti-migration, uh, anti-refugee uh, discourse, rhetoric, extremist rhetoric in uh, public. I will very briefly uh, mention one example uh, and the implications uh, of uh, this example. So the example is uh, very simple. Uh, so two years ago during the summer, no refugee crisis, fortunately, uh, uh, etc. A uh, far-right politician, member of the European Parliament, he sent an open letter to Sofia municipality explaining or stating uh, uh, that uh, Sofia is invaded by uh, refugees, male who terrorized uh, uh, the city dwellers, etc., etc. So in, during this period, uh, the camps were really uh, empty, 10% uh, uh, presence uh, uh, of their capacity. Uh, 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 etc. Why do I take this example and why do I invest, uh, let's say, so much uh, uh, theory in that? Uh, uh, similar examples uh, you can find all over the world, uh, 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 let's say thousands of, uh, of them. The, the example is interesting because it is typical, not because it is unique. But I will um, really mention uh, 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 and emphasize uh, the very uh, serious impact of such discourses, not only creating tensions, not only, uh, let's say, creating anti-refugee sentiments, it is clear, let's say, and obvious, uh, let's say. What is less obvious and what is much more important, they, these discourses succeed in redesigning the body politics. 
what do I mean? Again, I take the example for Bulgarians, okay, to make a, a relation between the discourse and the impact. In Bulgaria, there is less than 2% of immigration, and there are very, very, very few refugees, less than 2,000 in the country. But when people are asked in polls, how many immigrants are there in the country? The answer, so it is an average, is 11%. So six times more. So you see really a redesigning of the composition of the nation and it has uh, huge uh, policy implications because all those who believe that immigrants are six times in relative terms higher, uh, more numerous, so that they vote for those politicians, let's say, who stay the same and not for the others uh, who say, okay, there are very few and they are well integrated, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'll stop here for going, let's say, to uh, the comparative part, uh, um, uh, asking a question, uh, let's say we are very highly qualified uh, uh, public, uh, uh, is this conception applicable to Western Balkans? Uh, so that because the webinar is also uh, uh, a space to generate uh, new knowledge uh, by, uh, by dialogue and by confronting, let's say, uh, concepts uh, with, uh, with uh, different realities. So, <clears throat> Every refugee crisis is a wake-up call for policies, uh, for societies, uh, okay, for citizens, uh, uh, etc. But if uh, we try to, to compare these uh, three different uh, refugee uh, crises, we see uh, how uh, many specificities uh, uh, they have, uh, so that they have a lot of common, if we are speaking of crisis, uh, but they have uh, a lot of uh, uh, different uh, uh, characteristics. So uh, we take the origin, origin, destination, nationality, and duration. So origin um, for the first uh, uh, wave, uh, uh, the one of Balkan uh, wars, is original. Regional. So the region produced its own uh, refugees uh, uh, flow, uh, and displaced uh, uh, persons uh, flow. Uh, the second uh, uh, refugee crisis, uh, so uh, 20 years uh, later, two decades uh, uh, later, the origin is from outside uh, the region. So the region has uh, anything to do. Uh, even some politicians complain that uh, the, the lessons of Dayton have not been taken into account. Some of them could uh, help, uh, let's say, the, okay. Uh, resolving the, uh, the Syrian crisis, but uh, it's, an, it's another question. Uh, 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 and they come from Syria mainly, but also from other uh, destination. Uh, we saw in the third uh, quite uh, diverse uh, outbreaks, uh, so that uh, the origin is very diverse. It uh, could be from the region and it could be uh, uh, from outside and it is from the region as well as uh, from outside. The destinations, they also slightly uh, uh, vary. Uh, so the first uh, one, um, okay, Western Europe was the dream, but uh, a lot of them also stayed uh, in, uh, in the region. And uh, for the two uh, others, uh, it is always, uh, always uh, uh, Western Balkans are, are, are transit, so that they uh, a transit or uh, origin, uh, but the destination is uh, Western Europe. Nationality varies again very, very, very much. Uh, so that uh, Serbs, Croats, Bosnians uh, in the first uh, wave, uh, Syrians plus other uh, uh, nationalities uh, joining uh, and increasing uh, those uh, uh, those uh, flows. And uh, the most diverse uh, is the, uh, the third one, uh, where from uh, Moroccans uh, to uh, Kosovars uh, uh, to Pakistani, Afghans, uh, etc. They are serious also in this uh, wave, but much, much, uh, much, much uh, less. Uh, so the, the figures again differ from a country to country, but uh, let's say the three uh, first uh, are mainly in diverse order. Uh, uh, so from Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan, and Iran, Iraq uh, come support for most, but there are so many statistics. And, uh, and the, the duration uh, also vary. Uh, so the first one was uh, really quite a long, uh, a few uh, years, uh, terrible uh, years of uh, war. The second, a few months. Uh, 
uh, fall, uh, 15 uh, till uh, uh, March, beginning of March uh, 16. Uh, and uh, um, uh, 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 the, the, the third is again the most diverse uh, in, uh, uh, in terms of duration, so from a very short duration for um, a few months uh, to, to some uh, could become trends, uh, but uh, we need, of course, uh, time to, to, to see if it uh, would, uh, would happen. We enter the second part. Uh, we enter the second part. Uh, we'll change completely, uh, uh, let's say, the migration uh, profile uh, uh, of the region uh, uh, with um, this uh, challenging uh, question, how to change uh, the region's uh, uh, migration profile. Uh, so here is a classical dilemma. Uh, do you change uh, the migration policies and they change uh, the migration profile? or you have uh, uh, new uh, trends uh, and those uh, new trends uh, lead, uh, let's say, to new uh, priorities of uh, uh, migration policies. Um, again, I leave this dilemma uh, for the debate and for our uh, uh, future research and uh, uh, policy, policy making. Uh, but it is uh, for sure that uh, uh, policies uh, 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 prioritizing uh, one or another migration, they do change uh, uh, the profile of, uh, uh, of the country in uh, the migration profile, of course, in policy uh, terms. Another way, let's say, um, easier uh, uh, to... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, to enter into this uh, second part uh, is to ask the question, uh, uh, is it uh, uh, business as usual uh, migration policy the last uh, decade? Uh, managing all aspects of migration, and there are so many of them, uh, uh, or, uh, it is, uh, or is there a major policy innovation? Mm. So we could uh, say uh, yes uh, to the last question. There is a major uh, policy innovation and uh, it could be uh, summarized uh, by uh, diaspora and development nexus. Uh, uh, in uh, the, um, this uh, summary, which is uh, political more than uh, theoretical summary, but it is also theoretical, we see also <laughs> new way, ways of conceptualizing uh, a diaspora. If uh, um, the, uh, the term classically has uh, a dimension of trauma, um, of orientation to the past, uh, the uh, new conceptualizations, uh, they are much more positive, uh, uh, much more enthusiastic, wings of development, heroes of development, and much more oriented uh, to, the, uh, to the future. That's why, uh, Okay, research uh, 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 trays, uh, let's say, new paths uh, also for, uh, uh, for, for, for policies. This, uh, um, this new policy uh, has been institutionalized, uh, so that very high level of uh, implementation of a new policy and uh, has been crystallized uh, in uh, new laws, in legislation, strategy, uh, all types of uh, documents. Uh, so the level of institutionalization varies. Uh, we see uh, Albania, uh, which has a state uh, a ministry uh, for diaspora and uh, a very rich uh, bouquet, I would say, of uh, uh, different attributes of this, uh, uh, of this policy, uh, a new law, a new strategy, a fund uh, for, for uh, diaspora, uh, etc. So that, uh, and also this uh, very, uh, a nice uh, a summary uh, of the pathos of the uh, major uh, message of this uh, um, uh, 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 diaspora development uh, uh, nexus uh, policy uh, uh, is uh, uh, the three E Albanian approach engage, enable, enable empower. Uh, um, uh, it is the slogan of the Albanian approach. Uh, Kosovo. Uh, um, Head a Ministry uh, of Diaspora uh, till uh, 2020. Um, it, uh, it was closed this year. I could not uh, find in English explanations of that. I asked colleagues and friends of mine in Kosovo, but uh, some of you know that correspondence takes uh, uh, sometimes a little bit more time. 
in our uh, beautiful region so that I'm still waiting for the explanations if there are experts from uh, Kosovo or on Kosovo please uh, share uh, your uh, uh, knowledge with, the, uh, uh, with uh, us. Northern Macedonia again a institutional innovation uh, so minister uh, uh, for diaspora but uh, a minister without a portfolio but still higher political uh, uh, visibility in other countries uh, despite long debates and despite uh, uh, a really important issue of uh, diaspora they have only uh, a sector uh, 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 within the ministry of human rights and uh, refugees and uh, uh, you see here again kosovo of course uh, kosovo does not have a double uh, institutional identity uh, uh, it is um, a small uh, a small mistake in the slide uh, just to explain uh, that uh, if you have this uh, so beautiful presentation in two languages uh, 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 it was preceded by a lot of mobility of the file itself from one computer to another one from one format to another one and uh, so the last uh, format refused already any changes <laughs> so i could not uh, change uh, kosovo to monte uh, montenegro uh, with uh, again uh, a relatively small country quite small uh, country uh, does not have a special uh, ministry but a department within the ministry of foreign uh, foreign affairs reasons we have we do have uh, policy innovations uh, innovation with all the attributes uh, uh, really strategic documents laws in uh, some countries uh, uh, and uh, uh, new institutions, very high level institutions in several uh, several countries. What are the reasons? Uh, what are the reasons? Uh, 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 again, I, I will uh, structure them in two groups, completely different uh, uh, ones. Uh, so the first uh, uh, introduces uh, the, the migration uh, uh, concept. What is uh, the major uh, a migration profile uh, of the country and uh, we have uh, uh, said and uh, uh, I would uh, reiterate again that in long term uh, uh, it has been and will be a uh, migration uh, uh, profile with a lot of um, figures uh, again uh, so that I will not repeat and uh, there are also other sources uh, claiming uh, dip, uh, different figures uh, but uh, we could uh, uh, generalize uh, uh, a really uh, huge diaspora, huge diaspora, which uh, could be a quarter, half or even approaching, uh, let's say, the population uh, of, uh, uh, of the country. Uh, the most uh, uh, painful <laughs> expression of this uh, uh, diaspora uh, is the brain drain, uh, so very high propensity to migration and very high uh, real uh, emigration of highly qualified, uh, 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 which uh, for some country, uh, some countries really uh, uh, are the worst in Europe uh, concerning a brain, a brain drain. So this uh, uh, real uh, migration profile uh, is one of the reasons. Uh, but again, to understand, uh, let's say, the policy dynamic, it has been the case. All these three decades, we briefly uh, uh, summarize and analyze. It has been the case, this emigration profile, but only recently it has been prioritized. So that, uh, um, okay, with all the lessons, uh, uh, how difficult uh, uh, in a way uh, it is for policymakers uh, uh, to realize the real challenge to address uh, them uh, with the adequate uh, uh, policy tools. Because at every moment there, there were all attributes of uh, um, migration policies, border, visas, irregular migration, uh, smuggling, trafficking, etc., etc. They, 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 they do exist, uh, but uh, um, okay, this is the art of uh, government, <laughs> let's say, to be able in these very complex kaleidoscopic pictures uh, uh, to, 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 to understand first, to realize, and there, okay, scholars could help. Uh, uh, is uh, uh, really the most important uh, form of migration and uh, uh, to uh, uh, elevate it as uh, a major political priority. So the second, okay, the second uh, uh, is a political or policy, uh, let's say, shift. So there was a shift to redefine migration in, not in politics, but in policy in a, 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 a term. So first you redefine the target, you do not speak anymore of vulnerable, irregular uh, 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 migrants, you speak of empowered migrants uh, with successful or 
uh, uh, anyway, uh, um, strong uh, migration uh, uh, project. Uh, you shift uh, the, the, the policy uh, and uh, you combine, uh, uh, let's say, uh, policy of migration with the policy of development, uh, uh, which is a very crucial, uh, really strategic uh, nexus. Uh, and uh, also you um, uh, offer a new understanding of migration, not anymore, uh, let's say, in terms of br brain drain, of, uh, uh, but of brain gain. So you attract a gain in one way uh, or another, uh, or you uh, acknowledge that even those who would never return, they uh, can uh, still help, which is uh, the major idea of uh, uh, um, of this uh, diaspora and development nexus. A few, um, uh, oh, uh, I have to accelerate uh, 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 a few more uh, slides on uh, this uh, new priority, of course, uh, diaspora and the return. Uh, so uh, here you see one politician who is uh, not uh, from Western Balkans, but from uh, Eastern Balkans, uh, um, Trajan Basescu, president of Romania. Uh, a decade ago, uh, who um, entered in the migration books uh, with uh, this emblematic uh, statement, uh, dear compatriots, please do not come back. Uh, we do not have uh, off, uh, jobs to offer to you, uh, but uh, end, we, end, we need your remittances. Uh, so that uh, he is the only one, <laughs> uh, let's say, expressing this uh, policy uh, of non-return of non-invitation to return, uh, but uh, if we are realistic, we could say that it has been a reality. It has not been a priority, let's say, for longer years. It became a priority mainly, let's say, the last, uh, uh, the last uh, uh, years. And here, uh, again, let's say very briefly, three different uh, types of uh, uh, rate of needs. Uh, so the, uh, the first one, uh, um, migrants with the projects, uh, project uh, to, to return. They are, uh, as a rule, more uh, uh, active uh, uh, with the big social, um, uh, uh, financial, sometimes uh, human, uh, human capital. Some of them could become change uh, makers. Uh, so some of them could be overqualified, uh, let's say, for their labor market. Uh, some of them could be conceived uh, as competitors. Uh, this is the diagnosis of a uh, a prominent uh, Bosnian uh, uh, score, uh, uh, etc. But a very interesting uh, group. The second group uh, is completely different, the readmission agreement, uh, so, so mainly for those uh, who um, irregularly uh, arrived in Western Europe and Europe uh, sends them uh, back. Albania also has uh, such a, a, an agreement and uh, a very um, okay new uh, uh, policy uh, a virtual return, what is uh, called a, a virtual return, uh, uh, this, uh, um, uh, uh, let's say, forms uh, like uh, uh, ours or uh, uh, functioning uh, online, uh, different uh, networks uh, for scholars, for doctors, for uh, engineers uh, uh, in diaspora and uh, uh, in the origin, uh, uh, in the origin uh, uh, country, uh, and uh, uh, also um, uh, let's say short returns of these uh, highly qualified uh, groups up to three months uh, on a specific, uh, let's say, uh, task uh, to, uh, uh, so that uh, the home country profits uh, from the expertise of, uh, of uh, uh, this uh, uh, highly qualified uh, dias diaspora member. So that uh, there is a question of uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, transnational entrepreneurship, which is very uh, uh, interesting, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I have to uh, really to, to, to uh, so uh, regional mobility uh, uh, is a form very dear, uh, let's say, to both European, uh, mainly probably European, then uh, local, but uh, okay. Uh, also uh, national uh, national authorities. Uh, it is part uh, of this uh, soft connectivity agenda of the European uh, 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 Bank for uh, Reconstruction and Development uh, for pillars, of course, trade, uh, uh, digital connectivity uh, and uh, uh, investments, but also mobility. Mobility is not considered as the major one. It is simply for, <laughs> for my presentation that I uh, uh, emphasize uh, 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 it. Uh, um, regional uh, uh, mobility, uh, it is a policy uh, which uh, really 
corresponds to the migration profile because a major specificity of, uh, uh, the, of the region is that immigration uh, in the different uh, uh, Western Balkan uh, countries is mainly from, uh, from the region itself and much less uh, uh, from the rest uh, uh, of the world with very interesting, uh, let's say, asymmetries. Uh, so some countries receive uh, uh, from much more from uh, the region like uh, Serbia and sends uh, less, uh, 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 etc. So that uh, very, very interesting specificities uh, uh, so that they could be uh, yeah, detailed uh, also. Uh, by uh, 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 during the uh, during the debate also uh, uh, with your uh, your comments uh, uh, etc and uh, uh, in this regional mobility there are of course poles of attraction not uh, uh, okay Mo Montenegro is the, the newest uh, one Croatia and uh, Slovenia are big uh, po poles of uh, 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 attraction uh, what uh, um, uh, uh, what we have to uh, realize here and to emphasize is uh, uh, that uh, migration is uh, much more than migration. Uh, it is a very complex phenomenon. We could uh, analyze the whole society through migration lenses, and it has several other implications. And so that for a post-conflict region, uh, uh, regional mobility uh, could be a very important driver uh, also for post-conflict reconstructions for reconciliation, uh, for uh, really opening uh, uh, new perspectives, uh, 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 etc. So the third part, uh, so that uh, first uh, I'll start uh, with uh, um, a very simple, it could be much more complicated, but very uh, simple, uh, uh, let's say map of uh, different uh, policies. Uh, uh, again, uh, it is policy priority. This does not mean that the other policies uh, are not uh, uh, implemented border, um, uh, etc., uh, trafficking, but I, I do not deal with them in this very short uh, presentation. Okay, uh, it is simply to say that uh, some issues, but again, I, I will repeat immigration and di diaspora, uh, they uh, became, let's say, valid for all countries uh, uh, the last, uh, uh, okay, the last years, uh, decade plus. Uh, they have not been, let's say, top priority all those years. Uh, but uh, okay, so uh, more or less all countries are concerned. So irregular migration, um, all have to deal. But there are two countries which are particularly uh, uh, concerned. Uh, so so uh, uh, Albania and uh, uh, Kosovo. Uh, uh, also, the um, the crisis uh, uh, did not uh, uh, impact all the countries uh, in an uh, equal. Uh, 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 way and uh, there is uh, one uh, policy uh, uh, very very specific I identified uh, just for uh, Kosovo uh, reintegration of uh, returnee foreign fighters uh, and Kosovo is really quite unique uh, so Western countries are doing studies uh, to, to analyze the experience of Kosovo why such a uh, small young uh, country uh, happen to be so courageous uh, uh, in implementing uh, policies uh, which are more, more developed, uh, 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 more comprehensive uh, than the ones of much, much uh, bigger Western uh, countries. Very, very interesting uh, um, uh, migration, uh, 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 migration policies. Uh, migration uh, uh, trends, uh, uh, I will uh, skip because I see, uh, okay, so the, uh, I'm running uh, out of uh, time, uh, one way ticket, uh, no more, so that um, uh, a major uh, policy challenge uh, for uh, the policy makers in the region is uh, how to change, uh, let's say, uh, this uh, perception uh, because uh, uh, the propensity to migrate is extremely high uh, in all countries, especially among the uh, younger uh, generation. Of course, not those who want and dream of migration do migrate, uh, but okay, so one uh, way ticket no more uh, uh, summarizes uh, uh, that very briefly, uh, who is who. Uh, it could uh, uh, look trivial for the policy innovation. Okay, so it could be, okay, policy makers are, who is who, who uh, of the policy innovation, uh, uh, ministries and uh, governments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it happened uh, not to be exactly the case. It happened that uh, the major role in policy innovations 
uh, or a very important role, I do not want, uh, let's say, to offend anybody, so a very important role uh, has been played and is uh, played uh, by international organizations, uh, different uh, international, European, some national, German, uh, 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 from Switzerland, uh, uh, etc. Uh, uh, okay, diaspora engagement, big, uh, okay, so policy innovation, new ministries, uh, strategies, laws, etc., etc. Who are the most active in uh, implementing this diaspora engagement? Diaspora representatives themselves, the same for return, the same for return. Most returnees have never heard of any policy of return, they have never profited. Etc. Okay, uh, that they they return for for a variety of uh, uh, reasons. Just to give you a very personal, very nice example, returnee in uh, Sarajevo, I interviewed. Uh, okay, typical, let's say, case. Uh, so the family uh, uh, fled the wars and uh, she studied abroad, etc. And she came back uh, to Sarajevo because she was looking for an email and she saw the uh, very nice email. Uh, on democracy and human uh, rights, uh, which is in the international European uh, regional master. And uh, so that very nice uh, example of uh, quite unique, of course, but just to mention how diverse the reasons are, but that, uh, let's say, the driver of return are the migrants, the returnees uh, themselves. Uh, 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 the, the diaspora, okay, this uh, uh, new uh, magic, let's say, term uh, for, uh, for, for, for policies, uh, of course, uh, very important symbolism, no doubt, but uncertain political uh, implications. Here, I want to, 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 to stress a factor which is absolutely crucial for all, uh, for most, uh, let's say, policy, for immigration, for return, for diaspora engagement. It is uh, the clash, the clash between uh, two, 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 two phenomena or two values. So the first is uh, patriotism. So most migrants do love <laughs> their country of origins, uh, but uh, uh, also a lot of them uh, 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 do criticize, do not like, and have escaped uh, uh, um, corruption, uh, endemic uh, uh, nepotism, uh, state uh, capture. And it's really a major reason, let's say, for return or not return uh, is uh, anti-corruption. So that the policy is not enough just to say, okay, diaspora, please help us. Because diaspora, they do not trust most of the governments. Uh, and uh, so a trust building uh, should, uh, let's say, be the first, uh, let's say, step for attracting uh, uh, diaspora, but also for decreasing uh, uh, emigration. And uh, okay, I do know it's much easier to say than to implement, uh, uh, but let's say citizens uh, and migrants equally, they want to see first steps, but political will for first step uh, uh, of anti-corruption uh, policies. Uh, uh, really crucial, really uh, crucial in all uh, uh, countries. So um, uh, ICMPD asked me for more concrete recommendations, not, uh, not easy, but uh, just to mention a few of them, which uh, could be considered also uh, um, good practices. For instance, in North Macedonia, uh, there is uh, um, uh, um, uh, a, a new law which says that uh, for diaspora investments, uh, so the state uh, would contribute with the 10 the investment. And I have discussed uh, this new law with the um, experts uh, in other countries, for instance, uh, uh, in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and they appreciate it a lot, so that they say it would be perfectly, uh, let's say, applicable to, 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 uh, to Bosnia. Uh, so other, uh, other recommendations, uh, um, uh, one is uh, uh, absolutely uh, uh, universal so that all diaspora representatives investment investors uh, uh, want it a uh, one-stop shop one-stop shop is uh, uh, the term for um, uh, 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 for for creating a, a place where uh, uh, migrants from diaspora or returnee uh, could find all the information uh, all the services they need uh, for uh, accelerating or even for starting uh, uh, their, their, uh, their, uh, their investment. Uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, concrete economic uh, measures. I uh, borrowed uh, them from an uh, um, excellent uh, uh, Macedonian uh, economist, uh, uh, Marian Petrescu. Uh, you could uh, um, read them uh, 
um, uh, uh, really financial instruments uh, uh, which have been applied also in uh, some other countries uh, like the uh, this diaspora fund in Albania also um, has as one of its uh, ideas uh, uh, those uh, guarantees uh, for uh, diaspora uh, investment uh, uh, etc we arrive at uh, uh, the huge news of the uh, day, uh, the new pact on uh, migration and asylum. All of us, uh, we have waited <laughs> for this uh, new European policy for, for several, uh, for several uh, years. It was also planned also to, to be adopted earlier this year, but in September, uh, late September, the commission adopted uh, the new pact uh, on migration and mobility. Discussing a new pact, I guess uh, there would be one or more or three uh, um, uh, uh, webinars, uh, uh, but uh, here, uh, uh, let's say the major uh, uh, idea, the major innovative uh, uh, policy idea of the new pact uh, is uh, the flexible solidarity. So no more quotas uh, for different aspects of uh, uh, the policies, but uh, voluntary participation uh, in the different uh, uh, member states uh, uh, to one or another, uh, uh, another policy. So that uh, uh, they um, participate uh, in those, uh, uh, let's say, policies uh, which fit uh, to, to, okay, to their uh, uh, major priorities, uh, but still, uh, let's say, share responsibility uh, and uh, sol solidarity. So very, uh, um, I think, heuristic strategic idea which uh, uh, could be applied uh, uh, also to, to, uh, to Western Balkans. So Western Balkans uh, do um, uh, exist uh, in, uh, the, uh, in the new pact. Uh, it is a short paragraph uh, uh, where the Western Balkans are explicitly uh, mentioned uh, with uh, this uh, tailor-made approach uh, so that the, the, the specific uh, geographic, geopolitical uh, location from one side and also what we mentioned at the beginning uh, that the countries are on their way uh, to, to Europe. So these two factors uh, are crucial, uh, let's say for the, the, the links also between the new pact uh, and, uh, uh, and the migration policies uh, in the region. Size does not matter, political will does. Of course, uh, size does matter and those small countries in the region, they do know <laughs> Uh, even better than uh, the big uh, countries uh, in Europe and, uh, and uh, elsewhere. But uh, I included it uh, just uh, um, to emphasize uh, that uh, in a few days, uh, uh, Portugal will uh, assume the presidency of the Council of the European Union. Uh, and uh, uh, among its uh, priorities uh, uh, is uh, my, uh, migration uh, policy. And it has uh, the very uh, difficult uh, task uh, to um, um, uh, catalyze, let's say, uh, to be a catalyst uh, of negotiations among the member countries uh, so that uh, the, uh, uh, this new pact adopted by the European Commission is adopted also by the, uh, the other European institutions. And Portugal uh, is a European very nice example how a small country uh, could uh, be uh, uh, much more active uh, so that they are, uh, if I remember well, a sixth place of uh, uh, taking uh, the newcomers, uh, the new refugees uh, coming uh, from uh, uh, sea. Um, uh, uh, and they are very nice example of uh, uh, responsibility and solidarity, which is not very well known, unfortunately, uh, in, uh, uh, in Europe. So, uh, the explicit uh, recommendation uh, in this very short uh, paragraph uh, of the Commission of the New Pact on Western Balkans is uh, upgrading institutional capacity. Uh, so um, we did know, <laughs> myself and several other experts, we have uh, written about that before the New Pact. But of course, uh, when it comes from the Commission, it has a much uh, okay, higher authority. Uh, so, uh, 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 this improvement uh, is needed, uh, let's say, for bridging the gaps, because there are so many uh, gaps, uh, uh, just to mention a, a few of them, uh, uh, so the new policy, especially if it is innovative, if, uh, uh, it is very ambitious, uh, uh, but uh, uh, let's say the policy uh, documents uh, sometimes are much less uh, and um, Bosnia Herzegovina is a case in point uh, where they discuss, 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 uh, let's say, for years, and uh, finally 
uh, they did not uh, uh, adapt uh, a whole uh, legislation. They did not create a ministry, uh, but simply uh, a, 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 a war, uh, let's say, uh, a, a document. Uh, also, another which, um, OK, I see Alexander who wants to, yeah, uh, to make a sign. Uh, OK, so that I uh, go and I'm really, uh, OK, uh, um, uh, finishing another uh, very interesting, innovative uh, uh, moment. Uh, uh, of the uh, uh, new pact uh, uh, is uh, um, rethinking, redesigning uh, integration uh, uh, policy. Uh, so to increase the European level of a policy, which was supposed to be a much more national one, but uh, uh, how to say there is a nice paradox that the more European it, it becomes, the more uh, the role of regions uh, could uh, be enhanced. Uh, we do know a region, uh, uh, Europe has a regional heart, so the meaning of region is different in Western Europe and in the Balkans, but uh, okay, this idea and the local level, a local, local level uh, is the appropriate one for new policy instrument. And I uh, really uh, warmly recommend uh, the Living Labs uh, with the, this again, a nice paradox. If you go in Brussels uh, to the European Week of Regions and Cities, you will hear a lot of uh, Living Labs, I went to Africa to, for a big forum uh, so that uh, it was again a key word, but I hear much less, uh, let's say, of Living Labs uh, in, uh, in our region. And it is a very nice uh, policy instrument uh, of incubator uh, of uh, innovative uh, poli uh, policies uh, where for uh, um, local uh, authorities, territorial communities, uh, uh, it is uh, a place uh, or an instrument uh, uh, where uh, first uh, to conceive new policies, but also uh, to, um, to test uh, their uh, applicability uh, uh, for uh, migrants uh, to participate, not only to be subject, but also uh, not only to be object, but subject also uh, of uh, uh, integration policies uh, for citizens, again, to co-author the uh, policy and of for participatory uh, research to, uh, um, to contribute uh, to the uh, uh, territorial uh, 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 development. And uh, the, 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 last, uh, the last slide, another um, very positive ideas, not uh, all ideas uh, in the new pact are inspiring. Uh, what, uh, uh, okay. Uh, 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 okay, I have a different uh, tonality, uh, but uh, uh, there is uh, one which could be interpreted uh, very positively. Uh, 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 it is called talent partnership, and it really concerns uh, all the regions of, uh, covered by uh, the Prague uh, process. Uh, and uh, uh, so that uh, I was really yeah, pleased, uh, uh, very pleased I was uh, uh, asked uh, to give uh, um, uh, recommendations to the Portuguese uh, presidency on migration uh, policy. And uh, I proposed uh, an initiative uh, uh, which uh, um, uh, brings the uh, Prague process, uh, let's say, in the heart of this uh, proposal. Uh, uh, so to make a conference co-organized by Portuguese presidency from one side and uh, from uh, uh, Prague uh, process covering 50 uh, uh, countries from another side. Uh, with uh, uh, the very challenging uh, uh, um, title, uh, Talents uh, for Reinventing Post-Pandemic Europe. So not to come simply to normality, uh, but uh, 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 really how to change uh, for better uh, post-pandemic uh, post uh, Europe. Uh, and uh, uh, with uh, uh, this very nice uh, uh, Syrian uh, painting, with a, with a message uh, from dark to uh, light, uh, which is both, uh, which is a symbolic, uh, political, uh, and aesthetic uh, message, uh, I would like to thank you uh, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. I, I was so captivated by your talk that I decided to let you talk a bit longer than foreseen. And this is also linked to the fact that we do not yet have questions on behalf of the audience uh, who might need some more time to just uh, digest all the information received. Let me maybe say that we will share Anna's presentation with the registered participants after this talk and also the recording of her talk shall be uh, uploaded to our website in say two to three weeks. 
Um, so in this sense, uh, please feel free to also share the link with your colleagues and to also share the presentation that she delivered. I personally have a lot of questions, um, but maybe just to give our participants some more time, I will start with uh, the last slide. And thank you for proposing um, to, for the Prague process to engage also uh, with the Portuguese EU presidency. I think we have a member of the uh, Portuguese administration here with us today, and we are already in touch uh, with them. Our current leading state, the Czech Republic, will also invite Portugal to join our strategic group of the Prague process and possibly maybe even implement an event as suggested by you. When it comes to the talent partnerships, we are, of course, very much looking forward to this uh, forthcoming proposal on behalf of the European Commission, which uh, I don't know when exactly, but I hope uh, we will have in spring. Let me also introduce my colleague Irina Lusak, who is here to uh, guide to the Q&A session. We, of course, have only limited time for it now, but I would still invite you to ask your questions. And I would maybe start with a question that is twofold and I think one of the most pressing issues that we face nowadays according to NGOs to media reports is of course the the refugee flows that we experience uh, across the so-called eastern Mediterranean route where we see of course the camps on the Greek islands which are um, not providing, let's say, the, the necessary infrastructure, but we also see uh, migrants and asylum seekers stranded in Bosnia and Herzegovina and also along uh, other borders along the migration route that you just presented and introduced um, in such comprehensive way. Do you see any not solution, but change or improvements uh, in, let's say, in the in the coming months? This would be my first question. And the second one is quite the opposite, namely a long-term question uh, relating to demography. And as you said, emigration in the Western Balkan region is, of course, uh, a big issue also in Bulgaria, a big challenge. And I will dare to cite a, another expert that we had who said that there is no way of bringing back the productive, young, working age uh, population from the centers, let's say, uh, meaning Western Europe or destination countries, to the, as he called it, more peripheric regions. And he said that no matter what states try, they will never manage to bring back this young, dynamic, working age, doesn't have to be young uh, population. And he also said that demographically this will end in a disaster in the coming decades, or not disaster, but just depopulation, so to say. So uh, maybe with those two easy questions on immediate urgencies, but also long-term challenges, I would uh, invite you to maybe uh, continue your talk and invite also the participants to make use of these last 10 minutes to ask their questions. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, you already named uh, the next, uh, next webinars because uh, uh, each of them needs a special, a special uh, uh, webinar. Uh, a big um, mm -hmm. uh, challenge, uh, which is uh, of course policy challenge, uh, this uh, new refugee flows. Uh, uh, which is uh, uh, also a civic, uh, a civic challenge. Uh, so what um, um, I would invite really uh, um, if there are, um, let's say, participants uh, from those countries, uh, okay, to, to bring their insights, uh, not as a question, but as, uh, uh, as comments. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, what uh, myself uh, uh, as a very privileged, uh, uh, let's say, uh, observer, um, um, I saw a change in attitudes. So initially, uh, migrants uh, have been, um, uh, I'm speaking of uh, Bosnia, but it is the same in Greece, but it happened already so many okay, years ago. We forgot a little bit uh, that uh, initially it was really a warm, uh, welcoming, uh, and uh, so that all kinds of support of uh, 
normal citizens who have never been activists uh, before, who do not intend to be. And uh, in, in Bosnia, it was uh, really very strong. I have discussed and I regularly discuss with the uh, colleagues there because uh, the memory of themselves as uh, uh, former uh, migrants, refugees, or so the memory of the war are so strong so that initially uh, the um, the welcome uh, uh, was uh, uh, quite uh, um, uh, quite warm and quite uh, uh, quite open. And I'm really sad to read uh, reports mainly from uh, civic rights organizations, and we do know that they are very sensitive to the issue. And sometimes, probably, probably a little bit putting emphasis only on the uh, on the negative phenomenon. But of course, they do not invent. Uh, this uh, negative phenomenon uh, that uh, there is uh, an increasing uh, rejection so, so that uh, uh, also these uh, countries which are a very fresh uh, uh, dramatic memory uh, for displacement they start to become uh, more and more intolerant another aspect uh, just uh, uh, but i really would like uh, let's say for a reality check uh, from the participants uh, because i did not do systematic research but simply uh, really discussing uh, uh, with my students, colleagues uh, uh, there. Uh, uh, it is striking uh, uh, to see downtown beautiful Sarajevo uh, 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 refugees. And of course, I was also one of the numerous to ask, uh, don't you have facilities? Uh, because when you read in the reports, uh, so that uh, in, initially there was really a lack of facilities. Uh, 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 but then slowly, uh, also with, the, uh, of course, the, the, the financial support of uh, uh, foreign donors, uh, uh, they have been built or transformed. So there are already, uh, uh, let's say, facilities and uh, some migrants already, are, uh, some uh, refugees are already accommodated there. But again, uh, okay, so these are talks uh, from the field, but uh, um, okay, with the former uh, students of mine who are really excellent experts on uh, migration working in some of the uh, international organizations, they, they explained me. Some of the refugees themselves prefer, let's say really to sleep on, on the street instead of this, okay, a little bit better uh, uh, facilities because they prefer to be, uh, let's say, closer to the smugglers because uh, Bosnia is uh, a transit country. Even if we see a very, very small increase in applications in all those countries, there is such an increase, but it is um, really minimal. Uh, so that uh, these are transit countries. Uh, so that, uh, um, um, okay, the situation uh, is very ambiguous, uh, very ambiguous uh, with the population uh, developing, uh, how to say, more anti-refugee attitude. Uh, and uh, um, okay, these uh, these uh, flows uh, which uh, change direction, uh, but uh, let's say come to, to to new countries. So that in midterm, I'm really um, not short and midterm, uh, not not uh, very uh, very very optimistic. Uh, so that's why I say how to say this uh, art will not save the world, but let's say if a teacher who publishes very nice photos, uh, very human ones, uh, uh, so that uh, check uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, series. Uh, okay, they, they try humanizing uh, uh, the, 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 uh, um, the face, the portrait of the, uh, of the migrant and uh, to, to make them close, uh, uh, et cetera. So that I uh, really think that, let's say, soft measures, uh, uh, really civic measures, integrating them even for the very short time they are there, uh, let's say uh, art, uh, participatory art initiatives, uh, sport, even with those kids, they could help, let's say, decreasing, uh, uh, let's say, the, uh, uh, the tension. But of course, they would not resolve the phenomenon because the origin of the phenomenon is not there. Second question, uh, one more webinar would not be enough. Uh, uh, demography and migration for any region in the world, uh, not only, let's say, for the, uh, for the Western Balkans. When uh, I mentioned uh, in the, let's say, I always introduce a, a lot of politics, uh, uh, let's say, in, uh, uh, in policies. Okay, this is uh, uh, one example. We have, uh, uh, let's say, two policies, demographic policy and migration policy. Both of them, for whatever country, are crucial because they build the nation. Both of them contribute to the design of the nation. Analysts, experts, they say, when there are deficits in one policy, 
and the the target is the same, the objective is the same, strengthening the national body, use the other one. So logical. Why it does not happen? Why it does not happen? It is not because there is a lack of expertise. It is not that there is a lack. There are so many studies. If you listen to demographers, they show you, okay, deficits, demographic deficits, and uh, surplus of migration combined and you find the perfect state. It simply does not work this way. And why? Because if the government has the two hands, they have many, but okay, the two, so demographic policy and migration policy, there is politics. There are some actors and more and more of them who destroy the very possibility of combining those policies which construct the image of the refugee as a radical other. There is uh, this very nice uh, conceptual triad, uh, but okay, so uh, <clears throat> research is there uh, to, to uh, help us to think uh, in more subtle terms, uh, uh, which is bordering, bordering, othering, ordering, bordering, constructing borders, which, uh, okay, we have fences, etc. we construct more and more borders, but also we construct uh, uh, boundaries, so that ethnic, religi ethnic religious boundary, uh, uh, etc. And they, let's say, produce otherness, so on the two sides of the boundary, they are not only somebody who is different, but who is other, who is radically different, and uh, let's say, order in this sense, everybody there is a place for everybody but everybody should be in his or her place etc so that they could be in a refugee camps or they could be accommodated etc but they would never become uh, let's say part of uh, of the national of the national body with this discourse which frames the perceptions and which impacts the real policy so all balkan states they Okay, they try to manage uh, okay, the transit migration, but they are happy. I could exaggerate and I would be happy if officials, uh, let's say, contradict me. But as an intellectual, I could say all Balkan uh, countries, uh, Western Balkans and Eastern Balkans, they are very happy that this migration is transit. They do not want it, let's say, to be, because when you say, let's say, demography, you presuppose uh, let's say a migration uh, uh, which stays, uh, which uh, uh, becomes part uh, uh, of the uh, of the national body, and all uh, okay, all the policies uh, they they do their best. Uh, let's say how to say to 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 accelerate. Uh, uh, let's say the transit. There was a message to to me, but I was unable. Let's say to, to me or to everybody, but I was unable to to read. Uh, sorry for the, for, for for that. Yes, I'm uh, and, uh, just uh, sorry, sorry, oh, but just to give you, uh, uh, okay, um, uh, um, uh, this is part of the explanation, just to give you a counter example, uh, and I do know uh, it uh, 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 very well, uh, there, there is a chance, uh, let's say, for the youth, uh, first for not leaving, uh, and second, uh, probably to return. And there is a very uh, uh, clear uh, case study, uh, uh, ITs. ITs are the, 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 the best paid, uh, uh, etc. Yesterday evening, <laughs> even I had talk with somebody who proposed, uh, let's say, jobs for ITs, Bulgarians, and nobody wanted to accept because they, and it is uh, common knowledge in my country that, uh, uh, okay, they are so well paid, all working for, let's say, outsourced, uh, let's say, tasks uh, for in uh, companies or their representatives in Bulgaria, they are perfectly well paid, uh, and uh, let's say, three, four, a thousand euros in Bulgaria, you are rich, you are not middle class, uh, 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 etc. And said, so that's very, diff very difficult to attract them abroad. Uh, so uh, uh, there, and I do hope that in other professions, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, they would find a way, the more qualified you are, uh, the, the, the more able you are, uh, it concerns scores, I'm a typical example, you work on the European market, uh, but to live in your country uh, because it is beautiful, because okay, there are several reasons now because it is pandemic, but let's say even before after uh, before after the pandemic. So that there are examples, so that there are examples of that. 
uh, counter examples to this negative trend. Uh, uh, and again, uh, don't uh, read the polls because if you read the polls, uh, it is one way ticket I, I, I mentioned so that uh, you think that uh, uh, tomorrow Kosovo would not have a young population at all. But it has not only very young population, not only very numerous young population, but it has a demographic growth despite uh, the, the high migration, uh, the high immigration. So that uh, the, the, the phenomena are more complex and there is, uh, uh, let's say, a chance uh, um, uh, okay, for countering uh, these uh, trends, especially, uh, let's say, for some professions. Some professions uh, fit better, let's say, to more flexible uh, uh, schemes. But IT is uh, there really, uh, when there is a crisis, look, uh, where do the IT go? So in Belarus, and where do they go? 13,000 have left uh, for some of them for Ukraine because Zelensky come, he adopted a new law for facilitating so that look at specific let's say group to also to envisage a uh, future uh, future future trends uh, so now let's say it is from the region not all of them of course but they do resist uh, uh, let's say the attraction of the of the west simply because they already work for the west uh, but uh, combining uh, let's say the, the 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 advantages of being home of uh, enjoyed nature good food and so my friends and family Etc. and uh, uh, enjoying very high standard because uh, with the Western salaries in the Balkans, uh, okay, it is a very good life. Thank you, Anna. I think we have actually, well, reached the end uh, theoretically of the seminar, but of the webinar, but we have now received a few questions. So Anna, I will ask you to be briefer in your answers and I would give Irina some 10 more minutes to go through these questions. Um, yes, please go ahead, Tiri. So, all right. Hello, everyone. It's a midday in Vienna, and we're happy that you're still with us here. So I just start with the first question that reached us in Russian, that is about the returnees, the Balkan returnees that return back to the region. Do you know, Anna, what is the intensity of the return of the Balkan, previously Balkan citizens who are now returning back to, to the Balkan region, to their countries of origin, perhaps? And do you know whether the countries also participate in their destinies and how this implicates the life in their return countries, in the countries of their origin? Thank you. That's the first question. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful questions. Uh, really, very, very difficult to answer briefly because uh, the question is very rich and uh, very diverse. As the phenomenon of uh, uh, return uh, uh, is, there are different categories uh, of returnees, and so the answer uh, would be different. So the most intense returns uh, are the ones uh, under the admission agreement. So this uh, waves, uh, the most emblematic uh, ones uh, of, uh, uh, in Kosovo and in Albania uh, for very short period, big waves, uh, 100,000 uh, in uh, uh, Kosovo uh, for very few months, uh, ir crossing irregularly, so irregular migrants, they are uh, quite rapidly uh, returned, uh, let's say, by, uh, by Germany, um, uh, so that the intensity of return is, uh, is higher. Is it a final return? Okay, it's another, uh, another question. So some of them are so motivated to leave that, uh, okay, they undertake, uh, let's say, a second uh, attempt, but most uh, do understand uh, that they have been uh, misinformed, uh, 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 etc. So this is the most intense uh, uh, return because they are in a way not wanted uh, by the reception countries and uh, they introduced, for instance, uh, uh, Germany very rapidly uh, adopted a legislation stating uh, uh, Kosovo is a safe country so that there is uh, okay, no way uh, to, to accept uh, asylum uh, 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 implications, uh, uh, etc. So um, uh, <laughs> there is another factor for uh, a huge uh, uh, intensity of returns, uh, which is this new factor. Uh, uh, it is pandemic. Uh, so um, it is a very recent phenomenon. Uh, so I uh, uh, did not uh, find in English a lot of information on that, but I could quote a, a very recent uh, um, a study, which is not an academic one. It is by a journalist, so that methodology I will not comment. Uh, but uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, which uh, 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 really identifies a huge wave of return 
after the start of the pandemic. Uh, uh, and so that uh, um, we are still to, to do research, let's say for, for, for the reasons, there are plenty of them, uh, especially also because uh, at the beginning of the uh, pandemic, uh, most of the Balkan countries were safer uh, than uh, some uh, of the destination countries. For instance, huge crisis in uh, uh, Italy, and we know how many um, Albanian, but also uh, uh, migrants from uh, from the region are there, etc. So that there are health reasons, uh, combining family reasons, uh, uh, parents reasons. Uh, uh, okay, uh, unemployment also r r rising, uh, uh, etc. So that uh, uh, for very short period, uh, really great intensity in uh, a return. Uh, it is uh, uh, much uh, less uh, intensive, uh, uh, let's say, for the regular, uh, um, let's say, returnee. Uh, just uh, um, to mention uh, the previous crisis, uh, not the previous migration crisis, but the previous uh, 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 economic crisis, uh, so 2008, uh, which came a little bit uh, later uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the region, uh, there were uh, expectations of huge returns, waves of returnees, they do not happen. A return happened, but not uh, uh, not uh, um, uh, um, uh, not huge return. This is, uh, let's say, the first lesson from uh, uh, this uh, return that uh, every crisis, in a way, produces returns. But also uh, of uh, another uh, trend, uh, which I had no time to explain, but here I will very briefly summarize uh, this: uh, the trend from migration to mobility. Uh, those several of those who returned by the economic because of the economic crisis they lost their, their jobs etc okay some of them of course settled um, reintegrated uh, but some remained mobile and the first opportunity they saw they they they, they left and just to give <laughs> Uh, an example from my field work, uh, um, a, a, a lady who used to work in a travel agency in Ireland, uh, okay, lost her job there, uh, uh, but uh, remained in perfect relations uh, with her former employees. And a few years later, her former employees suggested her a new employer in Spain. And so already for several years now, she, she, she works in, in Spain. When I say migration, return, diaspora, uh, this means uh, mainly uh, networks, and uh, uh, networks are big, big uh, capital. Uh, so um, this is a small illustration how how, the, how they work. Uh, so uh, and just to, to, to just to finish, uh, uh, so that uh, um, crises are the biggest producers uh, of returnees. Uh, but what a second big big trend uh, is uh, uh, that uh, uh, there are less um, uh, final returnees uh, or permanent returnees, uh, uh, but return uh, is uh, uh, very often a step uh, for a new migration. So that uh, this right. uh, trend, uh, yeah, from uh, uh, permanent uh, uh, to circular uh, or temporary migration. Okay, Anna, thank you very much. I completely agree. I think that the reality we are living today shows us that more often people are not disconnected from the countries of their origin and they form this global citizen approach, so to say, so that you are living between several countries at the same time and maybe you leave families here and there. They are very dispersed. It's not the same as it was back in a day. So and the connection and the webinar today that we're having is also another reason why why is it possible and we have another two questions they are somehow interlinked so i will start with the last one and then we'll finish with the first one that we received so that concerns about the balkan countries that in the first crisis of the 90s during the balkan wars they were themselves the migrants and asylum seekers, as well as refugees, through the second crisis of 2015, have they somehow changed their attitude towards irregular migration? Has it changed the mindset of the population? Because they were once back in the day, the refugees and the asylum seekers, and now they saw the big flows that go through their territories. Has it somehow inflicted the mindset and their attention to the topic. And the second question that is with regard to the anti-migration narratives, because most often we see that the media doesn't really pay enough attention to their fact checking or the data is being neglected. Do you think that we 
can somehow tackle the bad, the negative migration narratives and change them to the positive ones? These are the two questions. Thank you. Yeah, they are uh, really uh, uh, interconnected. Uh, uh, so uh, Western Balkans, especially because it is uh, specific for this uh, part of Balkan, uh, in a very, very short period, uh, experienced the two poles. So first producing migration by the most dramatic uh, situation of war between, uh, let's say, former neighbors, uh, 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 etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, a few years later, uh, two decades uh, later, uh, becoming uh, not the host, uh, but, uh, not the host, uh, but uh, of the transit. So how, uh, uh, let's say, uh, mindset uh, changes? Uh, unfortunately, they, they do change. Uh, there was uh, some initial resistance, uh, let's say, to, to uh, to negative attitudes and uh, so that uh, there was especially uh, let's say for the uh, the migrant refugee road um, because it was first uh, let's say a few months uh, second uh, so that there were more or less channels it varies the management of those flows uh, varies uh, from a country to country uh, but let's say they were um, okay so channeled uh, uh, in a way of course there were so many of them for instance the race station in belgrade or in several uh, emblematic uh, pub public uh, public spaces, uh, uh, etc. So that it was a shock also for the young generation; they have never experienced that, uh, uh, etc. But uh, it's a really um, how to say um, I'm <laughs> said as a citizen, as a scholar, to see uh, how uh, rapidly, uh, let's say, perceptions, attitudes could uh, change uh, from uh, the attitude, attitude where uh, you are the one saying hope and help. And uh, when you are in a position to help uh, and to give hope, okay, so many, uh, so many did uh, did not do. Uh, but the picture is uh, really, uh, how to say, diverse. Uh, I would not uh, make it dramatic. Uh, so the positive uh, element um, uh, is uh, that uh, European Union uh, uh, intervened uh, quite uh, quite rapidly with funds, with experts, uh, with the liaison officers. Uh, 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 etc. Uh, and uh, help, uh, let's say, for the organization, for the channeling uh, of these migration flows. So paradoxically, uh, uh, let's say, the Europeanization of the Western Balkan migration approaches uh, were um, really uh, was uh, uh, accelerated, has been, acceler been accelerating during uh, uh, this uh, second migration uh, crisis because nobody wanted uh, to deal let's say, uh, only with the proper national resources uh, to this phenomenon so that uh, they all accepted European gui guidance and expertise and uh, funds, uh, 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 the most important uh, ones, uh, et cetera. And also there were a lot of civic initiatives uh, from uh, local activists, but also from uh, Western uh, activists, uh, let's say, coming, uh, let's say, to the refugee camps uh, with a lot of initiatives. So that the picture is uh, much uh, more diverse. And I come, let's say, to the last uh, question, uh, what to do, uh, what to do in, uh, um, uh, with the hate speech? Uh, uh, just, uh, okay, to inform uh, the public, <laughs> I'm principal investigator of another uh, uh, project. Uh, one of my numerous projects is uh, um, combating uh, 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 hate. Um, uh, and uh, it, uh, it makes a comparison of two regions. Uh, so Balkans, uh, 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 Western Balkans and, uh, uh, no Balkans, not uh, Western Balkans, uh, Balkans and Baltic. Uh, a few countries from the Balkans uh, and, uh, and the, Balt uh, the Baltic countries. So that uh, hopefully in a year, uh, I would give you, <laughs> uh, let's say, more systematic, uh, uh, let's say, and uh, even comparative research because they are all part of the Prague uh, process. I would be happy to, to share. Uh, this uh, very, very, uh, very interesting uh, research. But now, uh, what uh, very, uh, uh, very briefly I can say, uh, there are, uh, uh, let's say, uh, at least uh, uh, three priority actions, uh, uh, let's say, to take. Uh, first, because these really big flaws, it's unimaginable how in a country of uh, two millions, uh, 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 so one uh, Kosovo. Uh, 100,000 could live in a few months. It's un unbelievable because it's a huge, 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 uh, 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 let's say, uh, 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 size of, uh, uh, of irreg uh, irregular mi migration. And how it, is it possible that it could be initiated by a false information mainly in, uh, uh, in the media? So that, uh, uh, okay, first uh, uh, um, uh, information campaign, but covering all channels so that all media, all governmental channels, 
or let's say responsible social media, etc. Okay, to say this is simply not true because the initial, uh, let's say, misinformation is that Germany voted a new law, uh, let's say, opening uh, its labor market to Kosovo. So it is simply very simply to check on the internet that it is not true. But okay, they did not check, sold everything, left everything, a huge amount of people. Uh, okay, so th th this is the first one. The second, and the, this is the first, but not the, uh, the most efficient one. So the, the most efficient, again, are policies. When they go there and very, let's say, rapidly, not the same day, of course, et cetera, et cetera, uh, uh, but quite rapidly, they are returned uh, uh, so that, <laughs> okay, this uh, policy response uh, is, uh, 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 okay, very important. Another policy response uh, is that uh, those readmission agreements, uh, so that most West European countries, even if they did not experience such laws, they signed the readmission agreement so that they prepare themselves. If tomorrow it happens to them, okay, they send them back very, very quickly. So policies uh, are more efficient uh, than, uh, than information. And again, uh, let's say uh, uh, civic, uh, uh, civic society campaigns, uh, because, uh, okay, civic networks have uh, uh, their, their channels, et cetera, should be, uh, should be mobilized, uh, 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 let's say, also for promoting uh, um, regular, uh, 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 regular migration. Okay, this is, uh, um, um, but uh, okay, I focused a little bit more on uh, this uh, specific case uh, studies. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, um, uh, okay, the, the, the really the huge uh, anti migration uh, um, uh, attitude, uh, um, okay, really very challenging uh, uh, issue. Uh, okay, for uh, one uh, political reason, uh, uh, which is that not only less and less. Uh, so that only extremist actors do produce, uh, uh, let's say, anti-migration discourses, but uh, uh, more and more mainstream actors do the same. What I call, the, uh, I'm calling uh, mainstream uh, um, uh, extremism, uh, ma mainstream anti-migration uh, uh, discourse, uh, mainstreamed, uh, uh, which is a very paradoxical phenomena when people listen from their leaders, uh, not the extremist one, but also from theirs, okay, it impacts, uh, uh, okay, so their, their, their perceptions, their, their, uh, their attitudes, etc. So that uh, uh, here uh, is to stress the, the responsibility of politicians, uh, so that it is not only to adapt new laws, but uh, the way they speak, because the way they speak sometimes could undermine the very possibility uh, of new uh, of, uh, of new policies. So that uh, if uh, till yesterday you spoke again the migrants and today you say, okay, we have a new law on integration. Okay, who will apply that? And I could give examples, but uh, uh, simply uh, let's say for for doing that. So that the main uh, major responsibility is the one of uh, political actors. And here the role of European Union is crucial because our elites as a rule, our also Eastern Balkans, but very much so Western Balkans, they are uh, not uh, sufficiently accountable, uh, not uh, very sensitive to civic pressure, etc. So the only uh, real authority which could a little bit, uh, let's say, impact and change and reshape and uh, redesign, let's say, their discourse uh, 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 are the European, uh, let's say, institutions saying, okay, this uh, could not, uh, uh, be part of your European integration, uh, you have to be uh, also for Bulgaria, we were better, uh, let's say, before we joined the European Union now, okay, so there is extremism uh, uh, going on, but because they are in the process of European integration, so that uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, is a very strong factor for European institution, uh, um, simply to claim that uh, you could not, uh, let's say, join Europe uh, with the uh, uh, extremist, uh, uh, let's say, stances and uh, yeah, discourses, uh, etc. Sorry for being so long. Anna, thank you very much. It's a very interesting reply that you gave. I think the work with the politicians is something that is needed, definitely, but it's also very challenging because, you know, I don't think that there are many actors out there who would be eager to do the work. But what we do at ICMPD, for instance, we have a wonderful project called Momenta, where we work with the journalists from the Eastern partnership countries and teaching them how to produce nice pieces on migration, what it means and what are the definitions, how you can change the reality around yourself. So we help somehow to stabilize it. 
and to counterbalance the anti-migrant narrative with a positive attitude towards migrants. Thank you very much once again. And then I turn back to Alexander. Alex, please. Just to mention, this is what we professors do, okay, in our lectures, we do change and not only give information, but, uh, okay, we try to change, uh, let's say, our students' attitudes. We share the same approaches. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. There's a lot more to discuss, but we're already 20 minutes behind time. So I would like to thank Anna and also say that she will, uh, she uh, agreed to publish a policy brief on the issue of today's webinar, which we expect to publish sometime in February, hopefully. Uh, so please, I have shared also the link to the Prague Process Repository, where you can find not only our policy briefs, but also the recordings of webinars. And uh, soon there shall also be Anna's webinar uh, under this link, both in English and Russian. Um, I would like to conclude the webinar and ask Julia, our project assistant, to maybe share the poll, and we would invite you to provide your feedback on how you like today's webinar and help us improve for the future. Uh, before wishing you all a festive period, a relaxed and hopefully health, healthy Christmas period and a good new year, um, I would like to maybe just highlight that we plan our next um, online event uh, for the end of January. It has the ambitious title Migration Outlook 2021 from COVID-19 to the new pact on migration and asylum. So in this policy talk, we will try to kind of uh, frame the main issues for the coming year. We will also look, for example, at the role of the new US administration and uh, its impact on migration policies at global level, but also, of course, at the developments uh, regarding the coronavirus pandemic and also the new pact on migration. So we have a very good panel for this event and we will also uh, in the future continue with our webinar series and hope to welcome you back next year. So thank you all for bearing with us uh, throughout these past two hours. Thank you, Anna, once again, for all the rich expertise that you shared with us, to the team and Basis Production for organizing this webinar. And I hope to see you all next year again, maybe even in person. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye.